Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. Today we're looking at building a budget PC out of some loose hardware I have in my shop. Starting off, it's a little bit hard to read the label on the CPU, but that's an Intel Core i7-870 first gen i7 CPU. And that's socket 1156. And I put an i7-960 CPU right beside it, which is socket 1366. Just for the size comparison, in case you run into the two, they're not compatible. But the i7-960 was kind of like the size of a Xeon CPU at the time and something I did actually use in a workstation. And what's really cool is it's packed onto this mini ITX Gigabyte motherboard, specifically the GA-H55N-USB3 which means it actually includes USB 3.0. And that is something that definitely wasn't common on most consumer boards with this generation of CPU. I think it was around third gen Intel where USB 3 became quite common on the IO of a motherboard. There's also an HDMI port, which was less common, but the i7-870 does not have integrated graphics, so you will need a graphics card. And what I have picked out is this gigabyte version of the GTX 1650 that features four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Now, for some reason, this version of the card has no fan speed control and the fan just runs loud all the time, which in turn brings me to the choice in power supply. I have this StarTech 400 watt power supply that has the necessary six pin PCIe connector for the graphics card. And the fan for some reason is also quite loud on this power supply. So between the GPU and the PSU, this is a really budget build at the end of the day. So having some loud fans isn't the end of the world. Another cool feature of this motherboard is its ability to run 1600 megahertz speed RAM. That is something that was also very uncommon with consumer boards or office PCs. Of course, there's a lot of motherboards that would overclock, but this Gigabyte board natively runs 1600 megahertz if you install that RAM. So that's really easy and really awesome. So in particular, I have 16 gigabytes of TimeTech branded DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM to install. I don't want to have the added cost of a brand new SSD to this build, so I have two 180 gigabyte Intel solid state drives, and the customer buying this PC can always choose to upgrade to more storage or do it later on. And I'm just sticking with the stock Intel CPU cooler. I think that will make the CPU run a little warm, but I'm not really too worried about overheating. And that leaves us with the PC case, and I just happen to have this mini ITX case laying around. It's a nice tiny chassis that will fit this build perfectly. I think the last thing I had installed in this was the combination of an i7-10700K and an RTX 2060 almost four years ago. If you're building with old hardware like this, certain things like USB 3.0 headers might not exist. To accommodate for this, there is a USB 3 to USB 2.0 adapter that you can install. Luckily, there's two USB 2.0 headers on this motherboard, so that's perfect. Just means that we'll be able to use the I.O. on the PC case with no problems. Here's the entire PC, not including that hard drive. I'm not going to install that. But here's the whole build. We're going to stick it into this PC case and then I'll come right back with an update. All right, and here's the mini ITX PC in all its glory. Onto the rear IO of the motherboard, we have four times USB 2.0, two times USB 3.0, mouse and keyboard PS2 port, three display ports that we can't use due to the CPU not having integrated graphics. There's an eSATA port, an SPDIF out, and then some more audio in and out. On the 1650, we have a DVI port, HDMI 2.0, and Display Port 1.4a. Now, taking a look inside the case, you can see we have just enough cable management to keep wires away from system fans. I installed one extra air exhaust fan over here. There's our two SSDs strapped up top, and more cables just bundled away from the CPU fan. So with the PC build complete, we're ready to test out how well the CPU does in 2024 for gaming. But before that, I'd like to see how well it does with video rendering in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so a little bit of an update. I was running into overheating issues with this little tiny Intel stock cooler. So luckily I did have a tower cooler on hand. So that does not add any extra cost to the build, but it does add some really great cooling features. Unfortunately, when the tower cooler was turned this way, there was absolutely no room to fit a graphics card. So I had to position the tower cooler this way 
And currently I have air coming in this way and hopefully just being exhausted out the rear. This is still pretty much like an open bench test. Uh, we'll see what happens when I put the cover on. But by this point in the render with the stock cooler, the system had already crashed and shut down and the temperatures were going way over 90 degrees. Right now they're sitting idle at 56 degrees Celsius, so there is a massive improvement. Maybe that's the expected experience with an i7-870, I really have no idea. But this does confirm that it's not the CPU malfunctioning, it was rather just the poor temperatures offered by the little stock cooler. Don't feel bad little stock cooler, I know you're trying your best. One nice thing to note is that it's also substantially quieter. So the tower cooler definitely worked. We got through an entire render and it took 24 minutes and 13 seconds. And judging by the low CPU temps as compared to the stock Intel cooler, maybe the stock cooler wasn't mounted properly. It felt pretty tight to the motherboard, but maybe there's something a little bit off because I wasn't expecting great temps, but I wasn't expecting it to crash. Anyway, let's put this thing back together. So the system is stable and we're all packed up again inside the little black box. It actually looks kind of nifty now that it's all put together. I'm going to segue into the gameplay now and I'm only going to come back if something goes wrong and I'll report on it. Otherwise, take a look at the performance and, and definitely let me know if for some reason you're using an i7-870 in 2024. Outside of that, I hope this was an alright video to watch. Have a great day.